Caleb Williams. Um, RG3 said that he believed Caleb Williams should pull a D-Li Manning. He don't got the juice. <laughs> you don't. When you think about, you ain't even got to say the first name. When you mention the word or utter the word Manning, that come with a little tremble. Like, oh. When you think about Sanders, you know, they don't even know, half the people don't even know his last name. They say Prime. Right. Dion. Mm-hmm. That come with a little rattling of the, ooh, Williams? Nah. And that, you, you say Newton. That ain't got no, you know, juice either. You know what I'm saying? We already see what that tried to get you. We, we sitting across from Shay Shay. You know ain't yeah. nobody training camp, you did OTAs, but that's just the facts. Right. So I think now when you're looking at these situations and, and who got the, the ability to say what they not going to do, it comes with a pre-existing resume because obviously I got sons when my son get to that point hopefully if he ever is in a draft my daughters is ever in a draft oh you best believe I, nah we straight we good what y'all want Mm-mm. nah I'm, I'm representing them <laughs> you know what I'm saying I know I'm gonna put my son and my daughter in the best situation to succeed right and that's not a, a succeeding-esque situation right you wanna, do you believe the Bears made the right decision moving on from Justin Fields? Because I said this, Cam, I said, I do not believe the Bears are going to pass up two number one overall quarterbacks in back-to-back years. I said, no way they'll do it. No way. I, I, I would have loved to see what Justin Fields could do with Addie Keenan. Keenan Allen. They got DJ still they there. They got DJ Moore. Cole Komet still there. You see what I'm saying? Like, what would he would have done with that? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I guess we'll never know. Are you surprised that they made this move? No. No, I'm not. Because uh, I don't know what was happening inside that locker room or inside that organization. Um, and we've talked, you know, a couple times. And, and I think with Justin... He's one of those. He's not. He's not a vocal person. He's not vocal like you, Cam. Yeah, he not. He not. Nobody else do, Cam. Yeah, which is true. But <laughs> I'm saying, like, I don't think he could express himself. I, or nor did I think he knew how to express himself in a way that it wouldn't come off in a conflicting way. Right. But in that position, you got to have. You got to have some to you. I'll give you another person who may not be vocal, but he got some to him. Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. You don't see Aaron Rodgers. Hey, bring it up. Everybody on me. That's one of those. Like, when they do that, that's a swaggy motherfucker. Bad, cold, <laughs> cold. But he just does it in his subtle way. Long way. You know what I'm saying? So all these different players is, you know, you got to have some, some stuff to you. Let's talk about his uh, his fashion. He's received a lot of criticism, um, painting his nails, mm-hmm. doing certain things. You were a guy that caught a lot of criticism from the way you dress. Man, Cam with them tight clothes on. He think how they this and that. They look good. They don't look good. Mm-hmm. He got them hats. He made he need to do. How the hate that that he received and you received. How would you how would you tell him to handle that situation and how did you handle it? Just be you. We don't need no more Cam Newtons. We don't need no more Patri- uh, 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 Peyton Mannings or Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady. We need unique players being themselves. And I got news for you. Gen Z is here and Gen Z is here to stay. Right. So whatever you may think that Oh, that ain't football. Man, that dude got pink nails. But I guarantee if he paint his nails pink, even dye his hair pink, if they win the football games, ain't nobody going to worry about that Thank shit. Thank you. Like, let's keep the main thing the main thing. Don't oh, you worried about fashion. Like, bro, I have a life outside of football. These are things that I like. I love art. I love, you know, fashion. I love my family. I love doing things that will take my mind off of the daily rigors of, the pressures of, of, of performing. 
And you can't judge me. Hell, I don't go to your cubicle. I don't go to your job saying what you can and can't do. Why are you drinking a caramel macchiato? Ain't you counting your calories? <laughs> but, you know, it, it just is what it is. I, I, I think, you know, what Caleb Williams represents is something that is, is, is unique to who he is. And we can't be uh, hypocrites to allowing... Why we like that, Cam? I, don't, I ain't like that. No, but people... It, it, I remember I was having this uh, conversation with uh, Coach Shula, Mike Shula, one of my favorite coaches of all time that have coached me because he knew how to speak Cam. Right? We had a headbutting one time with the things that he was trying to make me understand the level of expectations for what being a franchise quarterback was. Okay. And he said something. He said, would you see Peyton Manning doing this? Would you see Tom Brady doing this? And I had to stop him. I said, hey, listen, I'm not trying to be no Tom Brady. I'm not trying to be Peyton Manning. Because guess what? I can do some that they can't do. And they can do some that I can't do. But it's a thousand ways to skin a cat. And we all trying to win football games. Here. Right. So I hear what you're trying to say. But you have to also understand that that ain't me. Right. I'm not trying to be there. You know what I'm saying? I could go into Peyton Manning's neighborhood where he's from. Peyton can't come to where I'm from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He ain't going to do no camps at you know, College Park. College Park. No, no. <laughs> but I could go, you know, to Louisiana. Right. You dig what I'm saying? And, and I go to California and do whatever. And I'm not, the, the, the moral of the story is you should not have to try to mimic what somebody else did to appease to somebody else. Be you. That's not why they're winning games. You think they're winning games because they stand up there and they're all buttoned up and they speak yes. eloquently at the end of the game. They're winning games because they're winning games because of what they do during the course of the week. Correct. And if I'm doing that during the course of the week, why you care if I got on Versace or Bliss, whatever I got on? It don't matter. It could be I come out there with a bath. I come out there with a towel sheet on. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Listen here. I, man, I win the football games, man. Right. Did you ever get tired of hearing people say, man, Cam, stop dressing. Man, you dressing like an auntie. You dressing all them women clothes, them tight clothes. Did you ever get tired? Do you get tired of hearing that? Because you still here to this day. Bring your girl around me. <laughs> and we'll, we'll figure all that up. <laughs> we'll figure out well about you. Hey, man, listen. You don't, don't think I got the juice. She get the smelling these dreads and smelling that aura and, you know, smelling that ghost. Get to seeing like, oh, man, I like what you did with that. You could tie your bow tie. Is that a clip on? Oh, baby, I really tie bow tie. Like, oh, pocket square. How did you do that with a jean jacket? What you doing with that? How you got a dog on wallet chain, a, a, a pocket watch, like all these different details. It's like, man, I really study fashion. Right. I grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. So even though the Bible say, come as you are, Hattie Lou Newton wouldn't let me come in there with no Jordan shorts and some flip flops. <laughs> I had to press my jeans. You coming as you are. Come on. That's now. how you are. And I'm stepping. Right. And you can't name anything that I got on because a lot of it is from a thrift store. I thrift. These are things that I, I, I genuinely enjoy to do wow. outside of. Right. I love textures. I love textiles. I love art. Basquiat, Jean-Michel Basquiat. I love these people. Jay-Z. I love Pharrell. I love Kanye. I love the artistry of, of music, mm -hmm. paintings. Like these are our are, are self-expression in many different facets. And I tried to bring that to the game of football by saying, oh, this is what type of time I'm on today. I'm feeling sporty. Let me go on a step and let everybody know how I'm coming today. I want to feel like James Bond today. I'm going to put on a, 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 a tuxedo. Right. Oh, I want to, you know, get my urban on. I want to, you know, dress with a shirt or, or whatever I want to do. I can do it. And that should not have any type of issue with how I play because it really doesn't. Right. What does Cam's fashion say about him? So what, what, we, what we have on today, what is Cam trying to relay today? What you saying today? What you on today? I'm a big stepper. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I've been um, quoted in the, in the media recently saying, you know, just because you got a lot of money don't mean that you got style. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? And I remember... You got a problem with everybody stripping the mannequin. Yeah, 
yeah, that, that's a mannequin. That ain't you. Like, man, you got... That the 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 Versace glasses with the Versace shirt with the Versace belt and the Versace purse and the Versace like cool that's fine I don't knock that but when I see fashion for what it's right I said damn like I like how you put that on or I like the ribbon that you you know tied around your neck like I I I'm the Canelo um uh, uh, the Ralph Lawrence mm -hmm. the 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 Kiths yeah. the you know, Canella Bruccinelli. Uh, Bruno Cuccinelli. Brunello Cuccinelli. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I know. Oh, hey, no, don't you worry. Know, I mean, hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, these are all fashion-inspired things that mm -hmm. I like. And you don't have to have that uh, per diem to look good. You see what I'm saying? Like, right. you can go wherever you want to go and to mimic that a little, but doing it... With your, with your own flair. With your own flair. Let me, you, so you get up every morning, Cam, and put this on? Am I lying? Huh. Cam, every day, seven days a week, you get up and dress like, you, not, not one time do you want to put on some athleisure. Not one time do you say, man, you know what? I ain't, I ain't feeling like getting all, all spotted today, so you know what? I do you one better. You ask any one of my teammates, any one of my teammates, how did Cam dress? It was every day. It was a lifestyle, bro. Every single day. I, man, I got so many clothes that I'm not, man, I'm not about to waste my money. And I don't find myself spending $4,000 on a jacket or a pair of shoes that I only wear once. And I don't spend $14 on a pair of jeans that I wear every day. And it's going to look completely different. So, People who really know me know, bro, every day Cam gonna dress up. It's gonna be a different side, different style. You know, I don't consider myself with the Neapolitan, you know, with the strawberry, vanilla, or the yeah. chocolate. I'm Baskin Robbins. I got so much flavor. You got 30, you got 31. And Mo. <laughs> I'm a stepper, I'm a big stepper. Never pledge. I pledge me for me. <laughs> but bro, I'm trying to tell you, if an opportunity presents, like those are the things that I genuinely care about. Like, I love dressing up my kids. I love, you know, doing that because that was a passion that I, I didn't come from money. Right. So we had to make do with what we had. Mm -hmm. You know, we wasn't poor, but, it, you know, I remember watching MTV Cribs and I was saying to them, I said, God, E, man, look at that closet. Yeah. Dang, if I ever had that, I was going to do this. And then I invested in so many different pieces of clothing and that Energy wasn't reciprocated. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I done spent $10,000 with y'all. And you ain't going to... Don't worry about it. Or I go and support a black business and shoot, that reciprocation is still there. You see what I'm saying? So I love putting people on and say, bro, what you got on? Oh, man, this ain't it's thrift store, bro. This, you know. Yeah, that MTV Cribs had me fooled, too, because a lot of times they rented them cribs for the day. No, they did. What? <laughs> See, that's the way, that's why we here. We trying to expose <laughs> all that. Man, you know, what's the real? You feel me? So let me ask you this. It was reported, and you can you can confirm or you can deny this, that Jerry Richardson, when you sought down him, he was owner of the uh the Carolina Panthers when you was gonna be selected number one overall. And he asked you, he said, You have any cat tattoos? You said no. Do mm -hmm. you have any piercings? You said no. He said, keep it that way. Was that true? Yes. But it wasn't. It, what it, it wasn't what it was. It, see, that was what he said, but he also said other things after that. Okay. He said, we want to keep it that way because we don't want you to go out and do anything that's not a good representation of this franchise. I'm going to give you the keys to this Ferrari now. I don't want you to scratch it up. Me and Mr. Richardson's relationship was, was something that I had one regret in my life. I never had a relationship with my grandfathers. Because by the time I came of age, they were, they were deceased. Mm -hmm. And the man who I am now, I go to my father to have these uncomfortable and comfortable uh, Conversation. conversations. And with Mr. Richardson, what people didn't know, man, we had some real conversations. And 70% of them wasn't, had anything to do with football. He had a very... Um, good perspective of who I was and what I was becoming. He would always say, Cam, 
save your money. Because I would tell them, I was like, yo, I, I want to become the second football player to own a franchise. He says, Ken, you got to save your money. I said, Mr. Richardson, how do you save your money? He said, well, I had to make a business decision. I left the NFL. I played with Johnny Unitas, one yeah. of the greatest quarter. He still believed or believed at the time that Johnny Unitas was the best quarterback to ever play, mm -hmm. and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. But I had to make a business decision because the Baltimore Colts wasn't going to pay me enough for me to provide for my family. So I had to go into the workforce. He started, um, you know, in that way to, I believe it was Hardy's. Hardy's. Right? Then it Denny's. went into uh, Bojangles. Bojangles. Yep. So these things are something as a businessman where I am now. Me having different businesses and trying to have it be producing assets, not liabilities. Just mm -hmm. because fellowship is of existence doesn't mean that fellowship making money. It's my job to make sure that everything that I put my name on and that I'm a part of, Iconic Saga, everything that you see me produce, whether either social media or on YouTube long format, is produced and created by my staff at Iconic Saga. No backing, no help, no nothing. And it comes with the key thing that he taught me was he had these core values or these core words for the franchise to abide by. And one of those things was harmony. I was like, man, what the hell harmony got to do with it? He said, Cam, you have to understand harmony is the, the, the key ingredient for any two people or more to coexist. You gotta be on the same page. I can't want something from you that you don't want from yourself or you're not in alignment with that. Mm -hmm. Hard work, you know what I'm saying? F like these things are something that I still hold dear to my everyday life today. So no matter if it's a homeboy, uh, my partner, uh, whether we intimate or not, it's, it's, it's whether working relationships or not, harmony is key. And, and honesty to the degree where transparency, like I gotta know how you think, I know how you feel, and you gotta feel safe to express yourself and that I'm not gonna judge you for that, so. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.